We are rolling. Marty's back. Two seconds. Marty's sick of them. We on? Are we on? We on. Piece of shit. What episode is this, Justin? That's your job. You got one job. At least 36. I think it's 36. What do you think, Bob? I think it's 36. Yeah. Do you think it's 36? Yeah. Wow. We're, uh, we're uh, making some progress. We finally got Bundy back. He's, he's already yeah. fucking... He's already complaining. Can you turn the lights down? Can you turn the camera a little? Yeah, like he's, he's, he's like these like these stars that want like a bowl of like green, only green m and <laughs> Justin <laughs> running around. Uh, <laughs> he's about to get rat back by me and fucking Rick Dick. You don't even know him. All day. All day. Uh, tonight's guest, Richard, Ricky, Rick Dick, Evans. Live and direct. Live, coming at you live and direct. Uh, and Mr. Bundles, all right, puts a weight back on since um, yeah, put a couple pounds. pounds. Yeah, it's not that. What are you weighing at now, buddy? Yeah, uh, three twenty nine, maybe Ooh, yeah. under three. They started out at what? Three sixty. Three sixty. Yeah. Uh, so he's down. I'm down myself. I'm down. But is that your phone? Jesus, give me, give me. That's the that's the good part. Who's texting you? That way. Bunny, some of the ladies, man, these days, I think. You know, I don't know who he's talking to. I can hear him fucking whispering uh-huh. sweet nothings out of the full power. What? It's like, to see? Like, it's funny. Shut that fucking alert off. Uh, all right, Rick's, Rick's with us tonight. Um, I haven't seen Rick in, um, since, like, Saturday. It's so sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, good day. Um, <laughs> it's a long day. It's a long day. It was, <laughs> it was all right. Um, what else we got going on? I did a podcast yesterday with Ian Vic. You know Ian Vic, Justin? I do, yeah. Yeah. I did one with him yesterday. And uh, I don't know, that'll, that'll probably be out in a few weeks. And I got that thing with Tommy G that uh, that's um, coming out. So I leave I leave for Columbia Thursday. I'm really starting to stress about this. I just was talking to Rick uh-huh. downstairs, told him about, the, um, I told you what I'm doing, right, Justin? You did, yeah. Turkey neck surgery? Yeah. Which, um, so I showed Froggy, right? I go, I lost like 15 pounds. I'm getting this turkey. And he goes, Yeah, you're going to do a gay weight to go your way. How do you stand up saying that? I go, Yeah, and then I got a double chin again. That's, you know, that's what I'm trying to fucking avoid, Froggy. Um, so, yeah, I go for that October 10th. And I'm starting to like, you know, stress over it a little, you know, like when you, when I went for the dental work. It's um, dental works is is very stressful when you sit in that chair. There's anyone who's fucking ever had them fucking drilling on your face, nose. But this, I don't know. You know, a little a little spooked out about it, but we'll see how it goes. I might be on botched. I might be fucking having the bag over my head when we come back. Who the fuck knows what's gonna happen? But um, uh, I know Rick for a, for a little while, and and uh, you know we had a we had a, a lot of mutual friends. I I met a Rick. Uh, in the prison system, I wasn't with him. I might have been with, I might have been with you once, somewhere in old colony. But I, I just always remember hearing your name. You know what I mean? I always knew you. You know, you were um, a real good athlete, uh, just a good kid, and um, grew up in Charlestown. Where, where in Charlestown did you grow up? Newtown. I grew up down in Newtown. You know, I got to give the shout from my towns. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Newtown project. Newtown in the house. Yeah, Newtown. Um, I didn't know many kids from Newtown. I always think of Scotty Atherton. The, the, the worst part is the majority of them are, are gone. You know what I mean? Like, low, like everywhere else, it's the majority of them are, are, are gone. Yeah, it is. So it sucks, man. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, he's gone. 
Scotty, John. So I mean, that's it. Yeah. Drugs and alcohol wiped out most. So um, growing up, growing up as a kid in in, um, in Boston in Charlestown, uh, what was it? When did you first like start getting jammed up? I know, I know your father was in the in the system. Oh yeah, my father did a lot of time in Walpole. I'm a ten block baby, bro. You know what I mean? I was up there visiting. In first week I was born, so yeah, really, yeah, legit. The first week I was born, I still remember when they were making the toy boxes up there and stuff like that. They used to actually give trophies for ball hockey up there and really? stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have all these different town teams and and all that. They, I mean, even when I was up there, they still had the ball hockey going on. Yeah, downstairs in the gym. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, that stairway going down the jet stairway to hell. You know what I'm saying? That stairway. That's where people got it. You know, but. But yeah, so do you remember going to visit him when you were a kid? I mean, you were so a baby, yeah, I mean, yeah, going no going to visit. I mean, it was for it was consecutive years. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the majority, I mean, the first ten years of my life at least. You know, going there visiting him, and you know, it, unfortunately, you get all shit happens. You know, it's you know he ended up getting murdered. You know, so it was. And then, sort of slowly but surely, what happened? I ended up getting involved. You know what I mean? Getting it to the Oxycontin era, you know, I ended up throwing away my talents, as you would say, you know what I mean? Uh, see that, you know, how often do you see that in the inner city? I remember being a kid, um, a kid from out of pan, my wife, like one of the first times I saw it and, and close to me, Dickie Eplin, who was so gifted, you know, unbelievably as a, as a boxer and, and you know, you see it. Um, I remember that kid playing basketball. I remember being in DYS in Mattapan. And you know when you see somebody who's just gliding and, you know, slamming at home. So I just still see Yeah, I know. I just and now I ended up seeing him in the system afterwards and just, you know, just wasted talent, like you said. Were you uh what were your sports? Just everything? Uh, yeah, football, baseball, hockey, you know what I mean? I dabbled in tennis. Yeah, you know, I ended up going to a military school in Virginia to play football in high school. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Man. Yeah, I ended up going to Fort Junior Military Academy in Virginia. I went down and played football uh, for a couple of years. I ended up going to a school in West Virginia for a year, then coming home. And that's when I started you know, meeting my little bit of uh, demise. You know, I started, like I said, getting up to my RC car and stuff like that. Then ended up getting into a fight in town, blew my knee out, you know, got stabbed, you know. Hit with a tie, Ryan. You know, typical stuff. Typical sissy K stuff. Oh, sissy K. What's up, Oh, that was a that was a bar in Boston on night. Back in the day, but yeah, sissy K's. Uh, yeah, a lot of shit happened there. A lot. I mean, was it like a like a bad place? No, 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 no. no. All college kids and and yeah, it was it was a yeah, how it is. You get drunk, you go all your party, and then and next thing you know, shit hits the fan. Your friends are going, you're going, and that's it. It's it's the same thing in prison. You know what I mean? Same yeah. thing in prison. Yeah, you get caught up. You get caught up. So and it's it's like you know, it's like if you never come home, but you know what else, right? What could have been? You know what I mean? If you stayed out there and this and that, I didn't know that. I didn't know you got yeah. So what have we you need? So I ended I ended up rupturing my patella. You know what I mean? Getting my patella done. I ended up being I was stabbing the other guy. Like I said, jaw wires shut. You know what I mean? It was a pretty good one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Probably was so. Uh, yeah, just drunk and nonsense. Honestly, to tell you the truth. And then, at, like like I said, and then legit after that, that's when I started getting hooked on the pills, and I eventually caught my first big one, with, which was a twenty McNugget right off the rip. You know what I mean? And what was that from? I uh, was it uh, I'm robbery, I'm on my base, and you know they I mean stuff like that. So you know what I mean? Like yeah, your usual. You never did a county bid. Never did a county bid. First, at first time actually. Believe it or not, getting in trouble, I got hit with a twenty twenty in a day. Look, you know. Con- How you doing? No cock and no good oh, way. Not a good way. Yeah, twenty twenty of the day, legit. So our cock is definitely yeah. Yeah. So when started my time, you know what I mean. Cock it. Ended up putting a sheet over a skin dog. You know what I mean. Kicking them down the tear. You know, like you know. So I have to, to break that down for people. A skin dog is a skinner or a rapist. So he threw a uh, blanket sheet over his head, threw him down the stairs. Yeah, yeah. You know, punted him, got my sanitary on, you know what I mean? A little bit. That's <laughs> like, I mean, we, don't, we, we don't condone any inappropriate manners with children. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, that, like, they would, a lot of us are fathers, you know what I mean? A lot, especially listening to this show. I don't know the double gap. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was just talking to somebody the other day. It's, you know, kind of, yeah, it's on topic what we're talking about. But when I got custody of my daughter, when she was six years old, 
she'd always have friends and she'd say, oh, I want to sleep at my friend's house. And I'd say, oh, oh, who she live with? Oh, you know, her stepfather, her brother. No, no, no. And she resented me for the longest time. And just from being in prison and hearing all the fucking horror stories that, you know, kids getting touched and sleep all, you know, it's, it's just, it's just such a, I don't even like to talk about it, you know, but now that she's older, she realizes it. She's like, oh, thanks. I'm like, yeah, I'm not letting fucking stuff happen to you, you know, um, Seeing, seeing that shit. So where was that? Did you get a case for that? So, no, I did. I, I did. I ended up getting shipped to what it was. I, Walpole. I was shipped from Walpole from Concord. You know what I mean? Yeah. I went there. I went to the hole for a little bit. Got out in Walpole. This Nine was block, 10 block. Nah, it was, yeah, it was 10 block then. So this was like 2002-ish. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when it was still somewhat like Walpole, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. We still had a, you, know, you had your tables. You know yeah. what I mean? sat with your, your people you know what i mean your town mostly and stuff like that friends yeah you know so it's not yeah i started up i started up there you know what i mean and then slowly but surely you know you start getting into trouble up there and next thing you know you find yourself in that in that hole for years at a time ddu yeah. you know it's it i mean you're fighting you know what i mean you're fighting you're fighting for not just what you believe you're fighting with your people and what yeah. they stand for what they believe in so it's like it just caught you, you get caught, caught up, up. Yeah. you get caught up before you even know it. it's in and and next thing you know you're spending years in isolation so it's like i got a, i got a good glimpse of uh, a lot of a long time and don't name in a lot of years of a long time so for people that don't know in, in walpole state prisons closed now they had nine block and ten block which was segregation then they built a special uh, disciplinary unit, um, DDU, the Departmental Disciplinary Unit, where they, it was like a kangaroo court. You'd get a D report. If it was serious, you'd get a DDU referral, and you'd go to this old kangaroo court, and they'd sentence you to a year, two years, three years, four years, five years in the hole in Walpole. So that place was no joke. I was in 10 block and 9 block a lot, but I, I never made it over to DDU. But, I, you know, a lot of friends out were in there and just, you know, horror stories. You know what I mean? They... they you don't get canteen. They don't feed you. They give you like half meal trays. Like I'd see guys that get out of there. You know, at uh, my friend Justin Hall was in there for five years. I know Justin. Yeah, and he got out. And I mean, look like he got out of Auschwitz. He was, you know, you could see his ribs. Oh, and um, I remember I went, you know, brought him a bunch of, um, you know, peanut butter and fluff and honey buns and Snickers bars. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he's like, oh, I'll pay you. I'm like, yeah, no, don't worry about it, man. You know, so. He owes me for life with that one thousand. Yeah, yeah. But so you ended up um, ten block at DDU and all that. Ten block DDU did all that tour. You know what I mean? And ended up getting going to Shirley Max from there. Obviously, again, getting, getting into uh, getting some fights in Walpole. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. And when obviously when you do, they start trying to segregate you and keep you away from people. Yeah, so like you're yeah, all. you're in gang blocks. You're doing all this stuff. The STG. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of it's a pain in the ass, but it's away from them. To, justifiably holds you i would say you know what i mean so it's like yeah back and forth i, I must say i think i got kicked out of the max twice in walpole two or three times too you know spent a lot of time in the rv it was never in car i never, mean i never, 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 never been there either i just missed the hole yeah just in the rv yeah, right yeah i mean i, I got a couple of years now you know what i mean <laughs> legit so it's it that but that one they, they actually fed me decent bit. Really, you know what I mean. So I, don't, I always heard the food was good. Bundy, you ever make it in Norfolk? No, never. No. Bundy's another one who's done a lot of a lot of old time. You know, was yeah. always in seg. We're even in county, never DDU, but always in seg. You know, now. I mean, between the three of us, right? That's so. Awesome. You get your books sent. Forget yeah. it. You get your walk when you listen to the Bruins. You get your yeah, little carries all your Southies. Get one. I'll take that single all day. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it. Room service too. You know, here's your food, Mister Evans. I mean, here's your food. Oh, you want your books? Sure, librarian. Bring them up. Yeah, I'm gonna go push in the car as you do it. Excuse yeah. me, can I use the phone, officer? You know what I mean? Here you go, sir. You know what I mean? It's good. The, cu the shower cu cuffed up. Yeah, you know, cuffs and shackles to the shower. Yeah, once you're in the whole water. Right? Sure. Yeah, and once in a while you take the cuffs away. You want to wrestle them for a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's just you know, it's typical stuff. So, so you went in. Um, well, going going back yeah. to um, your, what was your father mostly locked up for? Stick up? Well, yeah, I, yeah, he was a back robber. My father just, you know what I mean. My father was a back robber. My grandfather. Was the hijacker? You know what I mean? Hijack like trucks back in the day. That's what yeah. was the thing: the cigarette trucks, stuff like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. My father was just somewhat of yeah. He, I mean, 
he was about it. So yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I like I respect it at the same time. And you know what I mean? It's the same thing you were brought up to never to don't tell. You know what I'm saying? And I and that's the part I I really respect about anything. You know what I mean? You're a man, you deal with it, you take it. You know what I mean? It's, 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 the shoe fits you wear it somewhat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know, back in the day when I first started going to jail, when Bundy first started going, and, I, you know, I first went in 1987 when I was 17, it was always all the Charlestown guys, and, uh, you know, they were always known as back brothers. That's what Charlestown was known for. Yeah. And now, it's funny, I was talking to Connors one day, and he's like, you go in jail now, there's no more Charlestown kids. It was like generation after generation where back brothers and criminals – and like South Boston and other parts of Boston where the real estate shot through the roof, uh, yuppie started coming out and everyone started selling out. It's almost like there's no more neighborhood kids. You know, there's a few in the projects, but it's just different. And, and the drugs have decimated, you know, everybody. And and, and that whole just got wiped out pretty much. Think about law and law. Just think about it. Like I said to people, that way of life that was taught to us over the years, because that's what you were used to. You weren't used to praising the kids that went to college. You know what I mean? The girls didn't want the kids that went to school. They wanted the kids that were just wrapping up a five to seven. Well, you know what I mean? They just did a dime, but they came on from the feds. You know what I mean? It was that whole way of life though is like it, it's gone when you think about it you know what i mean and it's it's crazy because as as much chaos as it caused it there was a lot of principles and morals and stuff yeah, you know what i mean yeah. in the households that didn't have much you know what i mean it was you, you legit you never put your hands on women he never told yeah. and 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 you never talked to the cop you know what i mean it's a, those were your your moral obligations and it was like feel like that's where we lost sight of that like this girl that's somewhat you know what i mean i hate to go off topic but no 100 percent. and and in those days when someone did something along those lines that was shunned yeah you know now you know people you know tell off people telling their friends that there are people breaking bread with them in jail in the next block and you know if they got money and they got canteen and you know and they got yeah. so in or, or whatever right then, then the people like oh well you know oh they all told on each other yeah. and then you got people like justifying and just yeah. like just like anybody you ever saw on the can of skin beef, it's always like, oh, you know, I was 17, she was 16, you know, well, you know, I, you know, there's always a story. Yeah, there's always, always a story. story. It's never like, yeah, or I just skinned her out. Yeah, just eat it. Yeah, just, 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 yeah, just, just, yeah, just, yeah, you just, yeah, you just, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. you, you were a creep and that was it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you never get somebody, yeah, I ratted on my boy. I mean, you don't hear that. It's always, oh, no, well, you know, the cop fucking wrote in the report and I didn't, you know, it's, well, you remember, you used to have that be paperwork. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go into a cell, like people will ask you for your paperwork. Right? They want to see, make sure that like a ripper wasn't moving in the yeah. shell, and somebody suspect was moving in their cell because that wasn't that. And you know what? Wow. Yeah. In the nineties in state prison too, and um, I think early, maybe in the late nineties, you know, you had your key issue sheet. It said everything on it. Then they stopped giving that to you. Fact. You know, they started protecting these uh, skinners and rats and, and and everything like that. It's fucking. When they started making the PCs and stuff, the PC blocks, you know what I mean? That's yeah. when they started really, like, protecting them and, and, and stuff like that. Because usually you would handle your own, Spanish, black, white, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You, would handle, you would handle your own business based on your rate, you know what I mean? You know, so, what, you know what I thought was, was the worst about that whole thing? Is, you know, maybe with the nuts of shit on the CEOs, right? But there's cameras out and everything else. But back in the day, a, a CEO would say, hey, this guy's in on a fucking... You know, skin beef of a child, or this guy told on someone, right? And they turn their back and you beat their head in. Now, a CEO wants to tell you, hey, that guy's a skinner. Then you bang him out. And they log you right for a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you're catching a case. So then when they stop doing it, the cops are like, yeah, you guys don't do it. You know, they ain't doing nothing. You slip with whip it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. It's like, come on, dude. It's like, you you know what you're trying to do, you know? Hey, we're just going to turn it into like San Quentin. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been thinking of a lot of sight about, uh, of this stuff, you know what I mean? But I think the new prisons and everything, how they how they're all made, you know, and, and they're just you're separated from everybody. You know what I mean? They just divide and conquer. But um, getting back to you, uh, uh, when you were a kid, when did you realize? You know, were you always playing sports or always play always playing sports? So I, I like anyone in your family was an athlete. Was your old? Do you know where you got it from? Usually, no, someone who was no, like, no, I really was a fucking. No, I, I really, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I just always, I, I used sports as a it, to motivate me. You know what I mean? Like I said, at ten, my mother died a week later. My father was murdered. You see, you know what I mean? So I went to live with my grandparents. What year was that? That was, that's when we see, I was 10, so it was like maybe 88, 89. Uh, like, 
you know, yeah, years old. Uh, yeah, 10, 11 years old. I was 78. So a couple of weeks after that. So I always use sports to help motivate me. And like, that was my vibe. That was my anger. You know what I mean? I could let it out there without, you, you know what I mean? Getting in trouble or doing whatnot. So it's, like I said, I always use sports and I'll, I don't know. I just always go just all oh, yeah, oh, just all yeah. oh, but but I didn't it's not necessarily like I thought I was better than everybody else, you know what I mean? I just really did it for like that mental health, that 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 mental part, you know what I mean? And to not make me think about other things in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like so then growing up my parents, my parents passed away. I grew up with my grandparents. A couple of years later they both passed away. You know, in Charlestown. Yeah, yeah, they were in Charlestown, you know what I mean? So it was like that I went, went to live with my aunt, my mother's sister and you know, slowly but surely, like I was always dab, like dab, but I was saw a of the league. You know what I mean? Like little thing, not not like crazy. I wasn't like this crazy. You know what I mean? Fell and run of the streets like a wild animal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just, I was a regular kid that played sports and ended up getting hooked on the painkillers. And next thing you know, I'm I'm running into homes and tying people up, and you know what I mean, doing. Doing the shit that not normal people on that stuff would be doing. You know what I mean? It's, Did you get hooked on the pills because of a doctor prescription or because of your friends robbing pharmacies? Or, well, clearly, it's my friends robbing pharmacies. You know what I mean? There would always be a doggy bag on the train or the bus ride going back to school. I hate to say it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember taking the, I remember taking the train down to West Virginia and a couple of my friends just having to, like, and, you know what I mean? Go go do a little B&E and, &E and, uh, and, and, you know, I would, and all I do, all I remember was waking up. I w woke up at the stop, and that was it. I, I went up on the field, and I, I ran a four or five barefoot, and I said, "See you later." I'm done with the car. You know what I mean? I'm done doing anything else. And yeah, I went and I went to bed for like a week. It was crazy. Yeah, I went up and enjoyed. BF, I took I took my shoe. I went. See you later. I ran a four or five. I said, "See you later." I'm out of here. That was it. I'm not. I can't do it again. <laughs> I can't do it again. <laughs> you know, I got lucky on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Before you, when you were good guys, though. <laughs> <laughs> but um, who was that? So I did this. Uh, this kid, this kid Ben. He turned out to be more good. Yeah, I can uh, yeah, 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 I can took the chains. Yeah. No, you ever see him around anymore? No, no. As a matter of fact, I don't. You know what I mean? I don't. Like I said, I don't. I'm just a working stiff, just yeah. trying to get on the Bean Shooters podcast and yeah. stuff. Yeah, that. And like, Actually, you didn't even ask me. I asked him. I saw him. I said, you got to come on, Ricky, you know? Uh, how'd you get your nickname, Rip Dick? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm explaining it to him. <laughs> Shopping what? <laughs> I am single. I'm sweating in wood. But uh, back to um, West Virginia when you when you came back and you and you started getting in trouble and you got you got on the OCs and you caught the case. Did you get out on bail? Did you have any co-defendants? Because I don't really head, know. Hey, well, yeah, absolutely. Head co-defendants got told on. You know what I mean? So basically, were they from Charleston? Hell no, they were from no, they were from another area like the like South what is it, South Shore or whatever like that. They're from that area or something like that. So, but before I get too far. So what happened was while I was in there, I, I got lucky. I found a case log because what happened was when I got sentenced, legit being my first charge and everything, pled out to 20. I, went, I, I tried to dunk. I got oh, rejected. God. Yeah. He was yeah. working on a towel. He gave me the thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. No, rest no, in peace. No, 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 no. That can't be with yeah, yeah. 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 No, you got the finger wag, huh? Yeah. So I ended up, so I ended up getting lucky and found case log. And I ended up going into a revise and revoke. I wait for the judge to set, sit in Boston because it was out of um, Millsides, Stolpen, which is so denim. Oh, so I was out of denim. So once they look, they start seeing you from Charles. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, getting, you're getting scrapped because, yeah. you know what I mean, that label followed no matter what, that back then at least. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I ended up getting lucky. I had a good paid attorney. He got it, he got it, he got it knocked out to 10 10 in a day. Wow. You know so what I mean? So you have been on it when you are. Uh, I was in the hole too at the time. I was in the RB at the, when, when I went into court and I got it overturned. So I think I probably had about five years, five years in, five years into it. Oh, so. so yeah, so that, that changed everything. I mean, it gave you, you know what I mean? Think, you, you're 22, 23 years old. You just get hit with a 20 McVally. You're like, what? Yeah. Are they serious right now? And you didn't hurt nobody bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like. And talk about like a life change of that. Yeah. yeah, like uh, I was talking about my friend who just got out after 27 years. He said it probably on, uh, he's been on a few podcasts and he always says it. He goes, 
hey, 26 years old and judge gives you 35 years. He's like, you have five years and you still got 30 to go. He yeah. goes, you got 10 years and you got 25 to go. Yeah. And he goes, then you got 20 years and he goes, you still got 15 years to go. He's like, it's, you, you can't think about it. It's a lot of gym no. down. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> no law libraries. No law But he knows about that. That was our Congress State Prison. They always make the announcement. Jim up, no Jim down, no, yeah. no law library. So um yeah, so did you uh did you stay behind the wall right till you wrapped? Stay oh, you yeah. still, still stay behind the wall. So I think out of those ten years, I think there's probably about six in the hole. You know what I mean? So it was it it, it was a it was a dude, you know what I mean? I, I, what 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 a lot of lot of fight a lot of you know what I mean a lot of mostly with with the, yeah I caught up with the CEO oh, you know yeah. I got then I get taught with the old boy you know yeah. what I mean all that stuff so it's like you get a hundred enemies on your enemy list now they're playing ping pong with you in every prison you know what I mean it's like it's rather than just letting each other out and handle it like like men you know what I mean yeah. handle it and get it over with it. like I said they isolate you and what they do is they make the problems worse you know what I mean yeah. because then the milk becomes a problem you know what I mean. And and, and then people use that to make moves. Of course, oh, like this guy is a I don't want to go to that jail. And of course, they do that. Yeah, and it's just yeah, yeah. It so, sucks. So I got lucky. I ended up. I ended up getting. Well, I got to the gym fight up the max up to You know what yeah. I mean? So that's and, on YouTube, right? Yeah, that was. A, yeah, that one was on YouTube. Was you like, can't really see it though. Can you? No, you, you can't really see it. So you can't. You can't really see it. with Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, that was like a twelve or twelve, and then after that, they kind of like just. The, Dismantle. We had nice little crew of guys too. You know when you have a group block, block yeah. of guys, yeah. you eat together. You know what I mean. You go to the gym. You it's play. Fun. Play. It's, fun. It's, it's not that bad. Like yeah. it's not as bad as people think it is. Yeah. You know what I mean. It sucks because it's your freedom. But at the same time, it's like don't make it like we don't have fun in there. We don't laugh and shit like that because there there are times in there that you'll remember for the rest of your life. You know what I mean. Funny. You meet you and you meet. I you. You meet good people. You do. You meet good people that just happen to fucking make a mistake and pay for it for the rest of their lives and continue to pay for it even after prison. You know what yeah. I mean? Because no matter what, that stigma and that judgment, cat, it that follows you for the rest of your life. Try to get a job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Try to go to your kid's field trip when you're the one father that if shit did jump off, you'd be, you know what I mean? You'd be saying trying to save every kid there. You know what I mean? Legit. So. So when my when my daughter Jordan, you know her, she was in um, man, fifth grade or sixth grade, and um, they needed chaperones for the field trip, and she goes, "Oh, she wanted me to go," and she hands me a quarter form, yep, which is to run your record, and I I says, "Yeah, you know, Jordan, I can't go," you know, um, you know, so I explained to her, and I always was up front with her, and she was she was very smart, even as a you know, small child, she knew a lot. She was like, "Why do you tell her this and that?" And I just that's how I was with her, you know. And she'd go home from school one day and she's like, I was in school today and there was this kid in her class that got in trouble a lot. I remember the kid's name was Axel. He's from Lowell. Shout out, Axel. Shout out, Axel. Uh, he was a lunar, actually. You know, so I know so many lunars. So I'm like, oh, I got to know this kid's family. I don't know. But so she got home and, and she says, so today Axel raised his hand and uh, uh, no, someone raised a hand and said, what's a quarry for him? And um it might have been him, but the teacher said, oh, that's to make sure, you know, your father, uh, your parent, you know, wasn't in jail. And she goes, and Axel said, my dad can't go. And she goes, and I said, my dad can't either. And I was just thinking, like, <laughs> imagine the teacher just fucking going to sit there shaking their head. We've got no chaperones for this field trip in the world, but all these quality individuals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then, I was fucking dying laughing, but I was telling her, yep. And she handed me that Corey. I said, yeah, there'd be no uh, chaperone from, uh, from me. But yeah, like you said, little things like that. You know what I mean? Even even little things like that, where you you know you're blackballed for you know. for the rat for, for for legit the rest of your life. You know what yeah. I mean? It, 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 that that's just it is what it is. Though you learn to accept it and deal with it, but it still doesn't make it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you um, you never got on a bail for that case, right? I, you know what? Know what the craziest part was? So I was held. I was I was obviously held dangerous. You know what I mean? They wanted the they wanted the that's a huge years. amount of money. Yeah, no, no. It was like, yeah, it was 90, 120, something yeah, like that. Yeah, they wanted a bunch of money. And uh, I legit, I had no record. You know what I mean? So when I went into, I went into court in front of a different judge on a bill, and I was selling $2,500 bill. And I got hit with a 20 piece. 
Ugh. It's like 18 months. This is when the cases lasted long. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, when then you wish you stayed in there. And just then you wish it, you yeah. stayed in, you yeah. had the time to do. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like at the same time, it's easier said than done when you could be on the street or you could be in there. You know what I mean? Do so like, you think you were going to beat it when the jury was out or would you like, oh, I'm done? <laughs> I thought I was gonna. I thought I was gonna beat it because I was described at the scene as a six feet tall with a full set of lips, no hair color, eye color, anything like that, right? No bullshit. And then all of a sudden, two or three weeks later, they say no. They they, they got my full name. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they pictures are popping up. It's like they tell the same the way I style my hair. How can you charge your? I was charged with unmasked home invasion. Yeah. How can you pick me out of a photo of Ray if I'm a legit child or not? I'm at home and Ray. So it's like, you know, but like I said, luckily I, I got out $2,500 bail, had a paid attorney, went and I tried to dunk it. Like I said, I got rejected and, you know, sat there, dealt with it, paid an attorney to, to, to go to the off to you. Because when you take it a trial, though. I was with five years probation. I, the probation I could do. Yeah. Not the probation. I, I can't. I don't know. I got a thing with the probation. You know what I mean? No, I feel like no, it's just a setup up waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, we all do. You know, we would you know, back in, now they want to give it to everyone, but back in the day, you could literally do that. Uh, my clients on a candidate for probation. You know, we would rather, you know, you know, take six months more or a year more or what have you, you know, and, and the judge would usually accept that. They know it's how we always deal you with know, Now they want to hold you. They want the bracelet. Yeah. They, it's like they get, it's like they're getting money off this bracelet. They tied it, they plugged that with the bracelet. They took off the bracelet, right? Yes, I did. And it was my, my average. I sold that. Now I'll be doing Monday. What? The Wednesday in the co-op? Huh? My Irish roll. Let's get you off Thursday. <laughs> just in the nick of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. You want to talk about that? No? Oh, oh no. I've been talking about that all the time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to, shout out to he, he might have a little run in where he got that thing on his ankle still. He wouldn't have made it to that. He wouldn't have made it to that. He wouldn't have made it to tonight's, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> tonight's podcast. is brought to you by Nanju. Who's uh, who's watching? Oh, the point clothing lodge with me. Look at this. This is um, one of Bundy's favorite colors. Nantucket Red. Um, Bunny, I, like you, that. I can see that. Uh, yeah. Bunny, yeah. huge Nantucket Red guy. Yeah, really pretty. They don't have no four X, no. Uh, they're working on it. You're almost down to a three X. Go yeah, on. Go yeah. on. All right. So here's the thing with me, right? Sir. I get out and say, oh, I'm never going to do what to say it was an OCs or dope, right? I'm never going to do that again. I'm just going to drag. I'm going to say, have we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I did that over and over and over every time I get out. So when you got out, I'm going to say you were in unbelievable shape. Right? Yeah, yeah. All I did was work. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable shape. So what happened when you get out? You meet your... your yeah, your so wife, your ex, whatever you want to call She's a girl. Stop. She's like, yeah, no, I, yeah. So, yeah, I met my, I met my girl, and you know what I mean. Who, who is a quality citizen? You know what I mean? Is the you know, vice principal of the school? Yeah, like, you know she, what I mean? she, she like, can be the chaperone. Yeah, she's got her shit together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right here, but the toilet, the trash is here. You know what I mean? So it's like, no, no, no. Of course not. Yeah, yeah you don't have to be it. Just fucking you're like all of us. We fucking, you know, we we. You, we did, we dabble, you know what I mean? So I got out, I was doing the right thing. I was on probation for two years. So I had to, you know what I mean? And that's when, like, it, it was different. You were up there paying every day, you were up there taking your earnings, you know what I mean? Doing all that stuff. And I felt like they were always trying to jam you up, you know what I mean? Yes, there was all, they were, there was all, they were always trying to jam you up and quick to send you back. So, you know, got out, did the right thing. Couple of years later, unfortunately, fell off, you know what I mean? Started getting high again, you know what I mean? Started, you're running around, even, you know, doing it, pick, picking up more cases, picking up more cases, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, my Irish Rolex is off now, so I'm thankful for that. And, uh, yeah, it's, I'll be out here being sure. <laughs> no, I'm just like, if I'm running, Bob Bundy's always staring at himself in the, in the fucking thing. He's always, I mean, I'm looking at your phone. Yeah. I'm looking at your phone. I just see Bundy's teeth glistening. <laughs> and I'm just yeah, saying, I'm you know, I shout out to Matt Shaw. I was recording Bundy on the screen. He's always, people know that watch, like, what's Bundy looking at? What's he looking at? Yeah. What's he looking at? I just see Bundy sitting yeah. on the smile. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 
I'm like, damn, dude, I wish I had some fucking chompers like that. Okay, so you got a from you know, you fucking around, you start, you start chipping a little while. Start yeah. chipping, start chipping a little bit, you know what I mean? Going down the wrong path again, and you know, next thing you know, you get caught with, you, you get caught with a gun, you know? Yeah. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not for a convicted felon. Luckily, it was, you know what I mean, on my own property. So all you people out there, go off and visit the cops are chasing. Get to your home. <laughs> and get out with that fire. Right? <laughs> because it takes away that mandatory minimum. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I wanted to advise you all. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I, so, I, like, listen, I didn't know that until you told me that. that yeah. If you get caught with a gun on your own property, it takes away the... Um, the mandatory yeah. minimum. Yeah. yeah. So I got so I just got lucky with that. I just got my uh, my Rolex taken off. But like you said, I, I would dip and dab. I'd go back. I'd go into treatment. You know, I would, I would go back out. I would always work, though. I would yeah. always consistently work. You know what I mean? I tried to do the right thing. Did you let her uh, Rosa do all that? Uh, just I taught by friends, you know what I mean? Literally, I was taught by uh, Ambrose's dad, you know yeah. what I mean? I started working with that. Joe Ambrose, yeah. East Boston. East Boston. Shout out, shout out, shout out Joe Ambrose. Oh, Chris Colantonio also, with Joe's probably still not talking. <laughs> you guys got to fucking make up your family. Just go through your family. You fucking, you fucking Italians, come on, you know what That's I mean? It. You got to fucking make up. But uh, yeah, Joe, Joe's uh, Joe's been roofing for a while. Another, another good kid. Yeah, so just talking with those guys, you know what I mean? It's a, it's like still the same circle. Like you meet guys in prison, and you you meet guys that you have lifelong relationships with. Eventually, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're out in the street, you end up going to eat with each other. You start working with each other. You know what I mean? You, like I said, it's not. It's not all bad, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not all bad. So it's. I would have changed, you know, being away and you know the experiences I went through. Absolutely, and I, I wouldn't change it. Absolutely, like I said, but relationships that in bonds. It's the bond. You know what I mean? Bonds that you you normally won't get out here on the street. You know what I mean? Because you've been through more shit with each other in there. You know. Yeah. You have each other. It's it's a different it's a different type of caring. You know. It's it, it's just different. So. Yeah, like I said, I came out. But you know, some some people, right? Like, um, you know, just like you know, an AA and and all that, right? Like, oh, you hang around a barber shop, you're gonna get a hit. But you know, certain people, you don't, you know, I caught a lot of that when I get sober. Oh, he thinks he's better than everyone now. Yeah. Or he, you know, I hear that with some people, but. Uh, you know, I know who my friends are. I still fucking, you know, hang out with guys that just got out or guys they help out. But if guys are really, you know, crazy, yeah, I'm not going to fucking. Yeah, you got to separate yourself from the madness careful. at the same time, too. You do. You got to be careful. And it's like, and, and, and these drugs ain't no, these drugs ain't drugs, though, man. No. You die. You know what I mean? You you get high, you die. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, it's a different playing field. You know what I mean? And, and, and for me right now, in this Right now in life, it's just, it's not worth it for me. You know what I mean? It's, it's you, you grow up a little bit, Mike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, you're like me. I got a daughter. You know, you have a you daughter. Have a daughter. They start taking care of them. You know, before I didn't, like, Bundy, back in the day, Bundy, he always used to be like, his line was, you know, act first and worry about the consequences after. And that's how we lived. Oh, we're young. Yeah. And Bundy used to yeah. say that all the time. And, yeah. and I would laugh because that's how I was. I was like, well, if I do this, this could, no, no. If you start thinking like that, you know, you lose your edge. But that's right? how we had to live. Otherwise, yeah. you would look at this list. Like, it like, yeah. you was, you, you yeah. were, you know what I mean? So it was like, without risk, there's no rewards. You yeah. know? Yeah. And unfortunately, it's like, we just have to take the, the, the wrong route sometimes. We take the wrong yeah. route sometimes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, you know, when I was running around like you and, and Joel, what I was doing and getting high, I didn't think about, you know, there wasn't many people that cared about me, but there was always a few, you know what I mean? My father, my aunt, or this and that, right? So, and I used to, when people would give me a hard time, I'd say, hey, I'm the one doing the time. I'm the one, you know, suffering, exactly. going, exactly. going, to, going to rehab and going to jail. And I didn't think about the people that, you know, cared about me that, that I was affecting. I was just selfish. Like, what the fuck's everyone so upset for? I'm the guy who's going to go fucking sit in the box and fucking... You know, be in the hole. Then, you know, after I got, you know, the way we think is fucked up, too, from, from years of just being, you know, who we're around and drugs and being locked in a fucking cage, right? We, you know, we think. But people can't fathom what a lot of us actually went to with that. 
You know what I mean? They really can't fathom the, like what a lot of us went th- went through there, what it was like doing Todd, what it was like getting beat up by move teams, what it was like, you know what I mean, having to you know, wrap magazines around your waist to go to a medical call. People yeah. people can't fathom that. You know what I mean? So National it's like Geographic. National Geographic. You know what I mean? Like and it's like 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 you that does something to you, regardless if you want to admit it admit it or not, it but it had this it can either really make you or break you, Mike. You know what I mean? So and what I think is if you embrace that and you understand like I really feel like it makes you a better man. You know what I mean? Like it, so I like really do know what that is. Yeah. It's like we just go through the fucking we're in Hezbollah or some shit like that. We're in the wrong military toilet. Yeah, I'm big into that. Oh my god. Oh, it's going on today. Bro. It's so what's he up to? He's, He's a big news now. Yeah, I'm a big news. Well I like the current events and the war, you know. Yeah. yeah, I mean Israel's just blowing the shit out of everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they what just happened? can't. I, ran, I didn't, people were talking about, but I didn't see it. Yeah. Now, what happened? I ran fired about a couple hundred missiles over there, oh. you know, and Tel Aviv and stuff like that. But you, they got that iron dome. You ain't penetrating that. What that, is that? See, I, I don't know. Like I don't this know. crucifix. You know what I mean? It just starts cutting missiles in half. Trust me. Yeah. Would you know what it is? It's like a missile defense system that just auto fucking loads crazy projectiles. And it's, it's basically lasers, so they catch. They catch them coming. Oh, they shoot them out of the yeah. air. Yeah, yeah, uh, basically, yeah. Exactly. But it's all it's all automated. It's not a person doing it. It had yeah. a big fucking system, and it, it covers all the Tel Aviv. Wow, it's crazy. So it's why insane. even fire missiles at them? Just to fish them off. Oh, it's because they got all they they got they, they got the hoodies. You know what I mean? They they they. It's this is a religious yeah, world. Well, it's kind of right? Right? missiles. Like what do you know? Like a religious world. We're going back to the biblical days, right now. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, but that's yeah. really what. And it even is. if there's a truce, right? All these Palestinians whose kids were killed and yeah. bombed, those kids growing up are going to be like, I'm going to oh, take out, I'm going to take out, you know, the other side. That's right? the whole point. Man. So, like, it's totally like they could, it's I mean, never going to end. Yeah, it's never going to end. It is never, they, they don't end. want this, and they don't no. want it to end. You know what I mean? And that's the scary part that, and a lot of us, I hate to say, a lot of people have never even plugged in, don't even realize what's going on. I don't know. Someone's going to say, oh, fucking Iran's bombing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what's going on. No, man. And that, it's, it's, we got war all around us you know what i mean it's just it, it's just a real it's a crazy time and and like what like you said what how many people come into the country every day mike you know what i mean no. and it's like we don't know who these people are that are coming in no, there no you know i saw something the other day that said um i forget how many convicted murderers that they stopped you know at the border that really yeah. it's, kind of, it's just like going back to like um fidel castro when it, like the beginning of scarface right when they say they emptied out the mental wards, the prisons, yeah. and just put them on boats, sent them to fucking Miami. You know, you got rapists. And, you don't know who, you don't know who's coming across Look, that boat. Oh, no, they took over like that housing complex. They had to have the Hells Angels come down there to save those Venezuelan kids. They had to the legit have the Hells Angels come down there to save them. Yeah, it's about to be, yeah. They had I didn't a, know that. Legit, they went, the Hells Angels went down. They took over housing complexes. They're taking, they're going I, up. I saw the back. video with the M16. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's the, what's the game? Nueva, um, the Venezuelan gang that's uh, taken over. You should know that. I, well, I got a couple of them tattooed. MS-13. MS-13. It's something, something. But I don't know. Well, yeah, they're just taking Trump in there. Wait, wait, listen. That ain't happening. I don't know if it is either. Think of it was no a chance. I think it's a chance. You think so? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think I don't know else. I just look at the betting odds sometimes. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a big odds guy, and uh, I try to just, you know, um, my friend Johnny said to me one day, he goes, you know, people get all caught up over politics and upset, right? But if you found out, you know, you know, you, you were fucking terminally ill, or you had yeah. this going on, it's somebody, if you, that'd be the last thing on your mind. So, Facts. you know what? Let that shit play out, however it plays out. Facts. I'm not going to get all fucking wound up over it. Uh, and it's like, what do they do for us anyway at the end of the day? Yeah. Seriously, what, uh, what, what have you got at yeah. the end of the day? Have you gotten a check in the mail? No, but if he, got he doesn't win, we're going to, the devs, we're going to treat them like this kid. Would you throw the sheet over there? Throw the sheet on it. So, <laughs> so we're just going to throw bag of a gag Justin, you get the sheet over the head downstairs? Yeah, that would be fine. What if So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, 
We got we got uh, Iran is here. What else for current events? What's going on? Pete Rose, the Kembe Metapo yesterday. Yeah, Charlie Hustle, I figure why. Now they'll finally stick Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame after he's dead. They weren't like <laughs> <laughs> they were on a relish in the glory. He got yeah. ten thousand hits, right? You'll stick him in now because he's dead. That's yeah. what they're gonna do. Yeah, Just yeah, like yeah, the, you know, know. serious. So Bachi Amati had a thing with him in agreement saying he never tried to get in the Hall of Fame. He had something going on. And he tried to get in his office when he died and get the paper. Right. Pete Rose, because I guess what the thing was, was they said he bet on his own team when he was the manager. Well, you know? and it's legal now. The team probably and the, all the, yeah, the team was probably the last place. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were they were really ah, ah. He might have made a pitch in Shane. Hey, hey, he might have pulled a pitch in his own and don't get up. Fucking to the seventh inning. And it's yeah. like, he was just ahead of the time, guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let me go. Yeah, exactly. Put him in the thing. Yeah, I know. Fucking T. Rose, the greatest the fucking pitch. I, was, I saw a comment. Somebody put a comment and they said, um, I'll just say the great Gambolino. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably a mush. Yeah, of course he, he was. He probably lost, lost everything. Of course he was. He lost everything. He lost everything. You know he did. He, he <laughs> could switch the pitches and he still lose. Yeah. You know what I mean, he had no luck. So for sports now, you know, what do you do now? Hit Rick walks around boxing a basketball. Yeah, I want, yeah. He's he, always got a ball. He fucking hand ball. You'll either see me on a scooter driving around with my headphones on, you know yeah. what I mean? Like spitting some bars or something <laughs> like that. I mean, you see me down the sequel in all those bougie areas, you know, like, <laughs> trying to class the place up, you know, give it a private <laughs> session. Yeah, maybe a <laughs> or two, you know, unfortunately. But we're still trying to avoid that for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> But you're doing good, man. You're doing good. Yeah, I feel and, good. You know, you said something that uh, that you really got to think about, like we all do, right? Is when we when we were younger, right? You know, you were doing the OCs, we were doing dog, we were doing coke, whatever. Now you don't know what you're doing. You take the smallest little thing and you're gone. So it's like, you know, you know what you're doing before you do it. You know the risk, and it's happened to me. Yeah, yeah, and I have. I, I've over. I've been a victim of. I've overdosed. You know yeah, what I mean? Me because too. plenty of times. Because I'm not Overdose. just somebody who could just do a little. I got. I'm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a abundance. You know what I mean? Hit yeah. doggy bag. You know what yeah. I mean? Take stuff to go. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it ain't bigger. It ain't better. You know what I mean? What it has. So it's like. But yeah, I'm doing good now. I feel good. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the, you can't you can't put a price on your freedom. You know what I mean? And not in this day and age, especially when your life changes, you have kids. You it, you figure you figure life out for what life really is. You know what I mean? So it's like the thankful, thankful, fucking happy. You know, feel good. So yeah. just living. You know, grateful. Keep an eye on Froggy, will you? Red bit dark. You know, Froggy. Oh, but I'll take this for day. What do you think of Froggy? Might have to hit him on next time I need tickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Froggy's the best. All right, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Bundy. Uh, that was t you know to say? Look at this. Yeah, no, I'm good. Jesus. You good? You sure? Yeah. How do you look? You look good. You look good. Yeah. Let's take yourself. Sit back. All right. Thanks for coming Thank by, you. brother. Thank Love you. Love you, my man. My oh, man. <laughs> All right, 36. In the books. In the books. Let's go. Chef's gonna get ya He always shoots from the hip For ice coffee, take a sip Toss it